For me, okay, the most important mode of muscle contraction is the eccentric one. That really is what separates the powerful, strong athletes from the average ones. Uh, Eccentric is what leads to force absorption. Every time you are running, you have to absorb your body. Every time you're changing direction, you have to absorb your body. When someone hits you, you have to absorb their body before you can propel them. So absorption of force is super important. Furthermore, eccentric strength is the, the strength reserve you have. If you, okay, eccentric strength should always be higher than concentric. Even if you don't train it, it will be slightly higher. But if you have an eccentric string that is 10% greater than your concentric string, your potential for increasing str concentric strength is very low. You have like 10% strength increased potential. If your eccentric is 50% higher, then you have a very large ratio, a very large proportion of strength you can gain very quickly. And if you go to 200%, which is rare but happens, then you basically will be injury proof. Your tendons will be just on a seal. Now, eccentric training, Main benefits are, first of all, it will strengthen the tendons more. It will increase fast switch fiber recruitment because eccentric training preferentially recruits the fast switch fibers. It, it actually recruits less muscle fibers, even though you're stronger, but it focuses mostly on the fast switch fibers. So if you're an athlete, it increases your capacity to really recruit those fibers rapidly and make them fire fast, which we call firing rate. And if you use the eccentric overload method, now doing an eccentric with a much higher weight, you will desensitize the Golgi tendon organ. Protective mechanisms that are on your tendons and their job is to protect you against yourself. So when they sense that you're producing too much force, that you might tear yourself apart, it stops force production. But in most people, it's overly conservative allowing you to use maybe 50 to 60% of your maximum strength potential. By doing eccentrics overload, I'm putting those tendons under, under lots of pressure, lots of tension, without causing injury. So over time, you can reprogram those GTOs to allow you to use a greater potential of your strength. Now, one tool I use for that is weight releasers. This is, in my opinion and experience, the most powerful training method for rapid strength improvement. Sadly, it cannot be used on, on all the lifts. What it does is you hook it on the bar, you actually add weight on, on that apparatus. When you go down with the bar, it will hit the floor, and when it hits the floor, it will unrack. So you can lower maybe 100 pounds more than what's on the bar, then you can lift the bar up and you would do that eccentric phase in five-ish seconds. So that allows you to practice lowering a lot more weight than you can lift, really strengthening that eccentric phase. So that's what I use when I do a heavy or intensification phase. Now, other methods you can use to increase eccentric strength is slow eccentric. So here's how I normally program a periodized plan for the eccentric action. Keep in mind that in my programs for athlete, one day is devoted to eccentric strength, one day is devoted to concentric strength, one day is devoted to isometric strength. So the eccentric day, let's take three main phases, accumulation, intensification, explosion. Accumulation, higher volume. We use less weight, but we will overload the eccentric by going down very slowly. Going down in eight to 10 seconds. Of course, I'm not using a maximum weight, but I'm spending a lot of time under tension, really increasing the size of the muscle. That type of training is really good to increase hypertrophy around the distal part of the muscles, the part closer to the tendons, and as well as the tendon themselves, making you less prone to injury. That's in the accumulation phase. Normally, I want to be under tension for 40 to 60 seconds. So if I'm going down in 10 seconds, up in two seconds, I might do three, maybe four reps per set. So the reps are low, but the time under load is fairly high. Then when we move to the intensification phase, that's where my weight releaser will come in. I will use an overload. I will add a lot of weight to the bar, doing only one regular reps, like slow in five seconds, it unhooks, I lift it. Then I might do another or two more reps with a slow eccentric, but with no added weight. So I get 
the overload, but I get the volume also. So I will use normally uh, around 20 to 30 percent on the weight releasers and a bar weight of anywhere between uh, 75 to 85 uh, percent. Normally I start with a barbell weight of 70 percent and I just add up weight on the weight releasers. I work up to the heaviest weight I can lower and control in five seconds. For some people who are very strong eccentrically, I might have as much as 60% on the weight releasers. That would be like the ultimate goal. That will mean that you have an eccentric strength that is 135, 140% of your concentric strength, which will make you bulletproof. Uh, now that is for the intensification phase. Uh, normally three to five sets are done. Uh, then we will do the explosion phase. Explosion phase will include shock training. Shock training, also called depth jumps or depth push-up. I'm standing on a box that is between 75 centimeters and 100 centimeters. I'm letting myself drop down on the floor. When I hit the floor in the jumping position, I will jump as high as humanly possible. That is force absorption. I could also do depth landing. Depth landing, I'm using a box that is slightly higher, up to a meter and a half if you're a very highly trained athlete. You let yourself drop on the floor and boom, stick the landing in that position and hold for a second or two. You're teaching your body to absorb force. The same can be done with the upper body with push-ups from blocks. So the first phase, you're building muscle mass with enhanced eccentric via longer time under tension, going down in eight, nine, 10 seconds. The second phase, you're building eccentric strength by an overload. Like the overload can be done with the weight releasers. It can be done with a partner pushing down on the bar during the eccentric and releasing during the concentric. It can be done by just using a regular power rack. So I'm setting the pins like one hinge from my chest and I'm just lowering the bar until it touches the pins. Then I will remove some weight and lift it back up. So I'm still doing an overload during the centric. Or I could use the 2-1 technique. I'm doing a leg curl. I'm lifting with two legs. I remove one leg and I lower it in five seconds with one leg at a time, overloading the centric. Many different methods. In my book, Theory and Application of Modern Strength and Power Methods, these exercises or these training methods are all being discussed. And then in the explosion phase, it's all about being explosive. Force absorption violently. It could be the depth jump. It could be and apply push-ups. It could also be drop and catch. I'm using a barbell. This is, of course, not a barbell. I'm letting drop and I'm catching it and sticking the landing. I can do it with lateral raise with pretty much any movement. Absorbing medicine ball. I'm throwing a medicine ball and catching it hard, not absorbing hard to be able to stop the movement right now. So these are the methods I use when training the eccentric mode of action. Volume, overload, speed. You will find that with all three modes of contraction, it's the same thing. Always duration or volume, rate or tension, and explosiveness. <laughs>